Jesus has something to say about this kind of a situation. He says in Matthew 12, 25, every kingdom, which includes us, every kingdom divided against itself is headed for destruction. And no city or house divided against itself will stand. I believe that there are three philosophies that are destroying us, and they've been going on for about 80 years. Let me give them to you. The first one is individualism. Individualism is a philosophy, but I think it's also a religion that says, I will live for myself. There was a time in Israel's history that they were having a problem similar to ours, and this is what was written about it, and it's found in Judges 21, verse 25. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. There's a second philosophy that seems to be destroying it, and it's called secularism. It's the religion that says God is not necessary. Now, Paul summed up the mindset or the worldview of his day that I think is a very similar to ours today. It is found in Romans 1.25. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator. But I think there's a third philosophy that's been destroying our nation, and that is relativism. That religion says everything depends on circumstances. Now, I find that there's a dangerous thought in that philosophy, and that philosophy is simply this. It doesn't matter what you think or what you believe as long as if you're sincere. That is wrong. It is possible to be sincere and be sincerely wrong. Just because you believe it and you think it's true doesn't mean that it is. And the second thought that I see that comes with this is that there are no absolutes. What could be true at this moment may not be true at a, another moment. Our world was built on absolutes. I believe that these philosophy, philosophies are causing us to lose our country. We find ourselves moving in a direction that is not good. This is what Proverbs 29, 18 says. A nation without God's guidance is a nation without order. Happy are those who keep God's law. I think we're losing our children. Well, with this in mind, let me give you this scripture. The scripture is found in Proverbs 22, verse 1. Whoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism, and by criticism, they don't understand, they don't know, they've never heard it, they've never seen it, won't, set, won't accept criticism, will suddenly be destroyed and beyond recovery. It's a great price that we're allowing these philosophies to affect us. It's costing our country, and it's costing us our children. What is God asking us to do in these days? I think, first of all, God is asking us to repair the foundation. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, what can we do? We can repair the foundation. Now, i got to tell you, repairing foundations are not easy work. It's, it's important for us, and I'm talking about Americans, I'm talking about Christians, I'm talking about churches, to teach the truth. Now, what is truth? Well, a couple of thoughts about truth. I've learned that truth is universal, meaning that uh, if it's true for you and it really is truth, it's true for me as well. And if it's true for us in America, it's true for somewhere else in the world. It's just universal. The second thing is that I've learned that truth is eternal. It's always truth. What was true a thousand years ago, and I'm talking about that which was truth, not opinion, not some type of idea, but that which is truth is still truth today and will be truth in the long future. Truth. Well, what will, uh, what will, I, uh, what will truth do for me? I can tell you, truth sets you free. And then we're able to understand, according to Proverbs 2.9, what is right, just, and fair. 
we'll know what good path to follow. He said, if my people who are called by my name, and I know there's going to be some that says, well, that was written to the Jewish nation. Yes, it was. But I also believe that this scripture, what is true for them is true for us, and it's a scripture for every redeemed person in every nation. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Now that's, that's the call to prayer. Uh, that's where we're saying, here's what we need to do. We need to pray. But it says, and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Whoa. All of a sudden, this prayer is not a nice little, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. But it is the kind of prayer that is continual seeking, continual repenting of everything that God reveals to us. He said, if we will seek, if, if we'll seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their lands. Thank you.